Hi, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the channel. I have this uh, engine when, when it was booked in for uh, service. It had a spark plug in that hole and that hole and in that hole, but not in there. Why? Well, I can see the thread is damaged at the top. So I'm going to show you how I repair these threads. And you're able to do this with the cylinder head on the engine. So it's a pretty neat process. I've done it many times and it works great. So let me show you how I do it. So how did we get the old spark plug out? Well, of course we used our tools, the proper socket and we removed the spark plug. However, if you decide you're going to put a spark plug in here and then try and put it back in, you're probably going to mess up the thread. I suspect that's what happened to this. I wasn't there to see what happened, but that's generally what happens. I always recommend when you're going to put a spark plug in, put it in with your fingers. That way, and, and I say put the thing, the spark plug in all the way to the gasket with your fingers. So now I'm happy with the thread in that one, in that um, cylinder and which one is, yeah, okay, this is the one that's chewed up. So we'll go to this one and try it and make sure, and again, right, fingers only. It's the way to do this as far as I'm concerned because if I have it, I can't really see where it is or there's a bracket in the way. If I can't put it in with my fingers, then I can't strip it. Okay, so this one, the thread is pretty tight in it, but it did start and go in. So this one here, I'll be cleaning the thread up in this one as well. Um, yeah, but this one here, we're going to repair this one. And as I said, you can do this while it's on the engine. So what are we actually working with? Let me, uh, let me make a little drawing here. So this will be the uh, inside of the combustion chamber and the spark plug goes there. And, and of course, this is where the spark plug goes in here. Then let me draw some threads up one side and then it's all mashed up and it's damaged at the top. We'll do the same over here. We have a nice thread here and it's damaged at the top. So what do we have to work with then? Well, all of these threads right here are perfect. It's only damaged at the very top. So let's see, what can we do? Well, you're thinking, okay, well, you could put a tap in there, you know, that makes, that makes threads. The only problem is, is that if you don't catch it in the right place up here where it's damaged, it's not going to match the threads down here, and it's just going to make a mess, and it's not going to work. So there's a, there's a tool that I've had for quite a long time now, and it works exceptionally well specifically for this job. Um, and here it is. It's called the back tap. It's a trademark uh, name, and they're available in quite a few different places. So let me get it out of the package, and I'll show you what it does. So let's see. All right, let me zoom in here. So this is, I would call this more of a thread chaser than a tap because it's not going to, you know, I mean, if you had a drilled hole and you decided you were going to tap it, this won't do it. Okay, but this is for following a thread. So as you can see, there's the, the, uh, the gap in here is smaller than here. And when I tighten up this, turn this end and tighten up the collet at the bottom, you'll see that it starts to spread out. So you're probably getting the picture here how this works. So I'll, and how you can use this on an engine that is, um, that's assembled. So what we do is drop the tool down this way through, then we will tighten up the knob at the top, which is gonna expand it out. So we'll watch it expand out. And we take it out a bit. And what we're gonna do now is when we unscrew this, it's going to follow these good threads, and as it goes by the damaged threads, it's going to repair them so that we can get a spark plug in from the right side. Now, you can't do this all in one shot. 
So I would do that, I take it out, and then I put it back in again, and then I tighten it up some more and come back up through. So you have to, you know, maybe you do this three times or two, three times, four times. And we don't want to change the threads here. We don't want to make this any bigger. We just want to follow them up and repair these damaged threads at the top. So uh, that's what I'm going to do on the cylinder head right now. So hopefully that gives you an idea how this works and why you can use this when the engine is assembled. Because, of course, it, as I showed, it goes down through the top and then we can bring it out. Now, when I start for my adjustment on this, I don't know whether you can see it, but right now the whole end is trying to turn with it. So I just tighten it up enough so that I see it just barely move there so that I know I can tighten it and I don't have to, you know, I can't hold it after if it's in the engine. Okay, so then I take a little bit of uh, white grease is usually about the best thing to use. And I'll put a little bit of white grease on it like so then because it's collapsed almost 100 percent see i can get it to go right through okay so if this was on an engine you get the idea so this is pretty cool though because we can see what we're doing on the inside if i get the camera in the right place whoops give me a second okay so, of course, you'd have to have the piston at the bottom um, so there's room for this to fit in when you're going to do this on the engine. Um, so you would follow the uh, recommendations of the manufacturer, of course. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the body of it. And I'm not sure if you can see it right there, that little spot. Anyway, you can see it open up a bit. So I'll tighten it a little more. You can see it open up. So it's expanding out into the thread. See, it doesn't jiggle as much now. So let's go a little further. And, of course, follow the recommendations of the manufacturer of the tool. You can say, this is just how I do it. So I'm just turning this by hand right now. And you see how easy that's, that's turning. So I'm following the thread that's there. So there's no issue with that part of the thread. The issue is when I get up near the top, and as you can see, I'm nearly there right now. So usually I'll, in the first part here, there's a flats on here, and you can turn it with a wrench if you want to. But um, All right, so now I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's some little fine little pieces right there that's caught in the grease so i'm just going to give this a quick shot of air and then i'll relube it and we'll do this again okay so i gave that a little blow of the air and we'll put whoops where are we here oh here we are okay we'll put some lube back on it and let me zoom back out again and Sometimes, yeah, like now, I mean, I could put it all the way to the bottom, like um, put the collet down and make it smaller. So now I'm into the, into the good thread again, right? See where I'm into the good thread here. So now I'm going to expand it out a little bit more. So, and again, turning it by hand. So now I've expanded it out more. So I'm going to, yeah, see the right there. So now it's pretty stiff because it's going through the damaged part again. And again, so I'm going to go and uh, blow the, uh, use some compressed air, blow the, uh, the lube and the little filings off of there. And we'll do it again. Okay, so back in we go. And see, now I can get that easily in by hand now without any problem at all. But I know it's, it was still felt a little bit rough. So here we are back on the uh, cylinder side. And now I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. And for me, as long as I can 
make it go on those good threads by my hand, I'm happy. And now it's getting stiffer. And yeah, I can't turn that anymore now. So 13, I use a little short 13 wrench because I don't want to put any real pressure on this, but I, I can't turn it with my hand anymore. So we're just going by those very few threads that were messed up there. And when I look in here, oh, that's, that's looking great. Okay. So again, same process again. I'm just going to go in and um, blow the little, the little chips off of this, the little filings if there is any, and lube it up again. So at this point, I'm pretty happy. Um, it's it's going very well, and so with a little bit extra care there, it's still not perfect there, but it's getting pretty good. So again, I'll go back in to about there, and then. Give it a turn out. Okay, and again, and I'll tighten it just until Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it is. The so what's happened now is the collet is all the way up. So it's expanded out to its max right now. And it goes easily by hand through the good part of the thread. So now, see, I, I can't turn it anymore. Well, I probably could with two hands, but um, so we'll go back and uh, and use the wrench on it. And it takes very little pressure. So if if it takes a lot of pressure, like most things, something's wrong. <laughs> so there we go. I'll take the wrench off now, and I'm sure it can come up. Yeah, by hand. And all right, I don't know if we're able to see any any the little chips or anything on this. Um, not really, but that's what the grease is on there for to catch the pieces. So we'll clean this up again and um, see what we got. Let me give this a little wipe off here and and actually I'll zoom in for this part again here. So what where we're at now, where's the camera? Okay, so as you can see, there is no space in between here whatsoever. So I'll just undo this. So when they so there we are. So as I was going through here, then I was bringing the, the call, it was coming further and further in, expanding it out. This will only expand so far, so you can't go too far. It's an ingenious little tool. So no matter how much I would twist it here, it's as tight as it's going to go. And of course, we can see that the the big difference in the uh, in the um, spacing here. It's pretty much all the way down. So really cool tool. All right, so let me uh, move the camera here, and we'll see if we can get a new spark plug in by hand. Okay, so we'll do a comparison here. This is the one that that I already had. It just goes in easy as could be, which is the way it should be. Then let's see, can we get a spark plug? Oh, look at how easy that starts. Look at instantly. And I see I can thread it in by fingers, which is the way we should be doing that. All right, so then, so those two are perfect, uh, perfectly serviceable. Uh, one of these was tight. Uh, this one here, yeah, that one is nice. And this was the one that w it went in, but it was tight. And I can see some, yeah, I can't, can't do that anymore. It's too tight. So this one has, uh, and I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if no, it's maxed out. But there's a little bit of, I can see some, 
black in here and I wish it would show up better, but yeah, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. This likely has had the spark plug was probably not tight um, and it had a little bit of combustion gas go up there. So I'm going to use the, the same process on this hole just to clean it up. Okay, now I don't need to fix the thread, I just need to clean it. So let me get reset for that one. Okay, so I'm going to put some lube on this. Got a little bit of white grease works really great for this. We'll put a little bit on the collet. Now this one here, I can pretty much go right out, right off the hop because I'm not trying to repair the thread. I'm just trying to clean it out. But the same applies. I can drop it down through, get it to its minimum size, drop it through the hole, expand it out, get to get engaged in some good thread. And um, so let me do that. And then okay, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more just as I go because I can feel it loosening up. So when I do that huge tighten up on it, like I just turned it a lot on the thumb screw, that means that it's, it's as big as it's going to go. Right, so the the, the collet is, is, is out as far as it'll go. So I'm just going to take it at the size it is and just run it down. Um, and there's a little bit of crud at the very bottom, actually. Okay, so just very gently wind it through with the, with the wrench so that I'm down at the bottom. So yeah, I would say this spark plug was probably a little bit loose and they got some combustion gas up in there. So again, just taking this out by finger and there's our new spark plug. And what do we have? Whoa, look at that. Is that cool or what? So that is how I can chase out messed up spark plug threads without taking the cylinder head off. Um, and then this will stay with some lube in it and it's going to go back in the package until the next time. So pretty cool tool that is. There we have a perfectly serviceable cylinder head again. The spark plug threads are completely repaired. There's no issue, no problem with it whatsoever. Uh, I've done this many, many times and it works great. The takeaway is, right, let's put the spark plugs in by finger. No, no tools, uh, anything like that. Now, if you get into a spot where, okay, well, I had to use the socket and I had to use the extension because I can't really reach in there, um, I just use an old spark plug boot, but a piece of rubber hose would work. Um, and you can just put it on and see now I've got... I can get around whatever's in the way and I can easily put the spark plug in. But if it jams up, then this will just turn. So I know there's a problem and I can take the plug out and I can start again. So uh, hopefully this helps you out or, or somebody that you know, they just came and said, oh man, I just wrecked my engine. The spark plug won't go in. No, you didn't wreck your engine. It's repairable. That's how I do it. And you see it works. So. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for spending time with me today. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody out. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you again. Bye now.